Hello everybody and welcome back to KXP. Unfortunately, between the last episode and this episode, I ended up having a series of problems which, long story short, resulted in our save file becoming unusable and we had to start anew. However, I'm, I'm, I'm really tired of doing the early game and, and the grind and all that. I really just want to keep pushing forward and explore the Kerbal system as our goal was. And so I decided to just kind of give myself the money, science, and reputation that we had accrued in the previous save. It's not the best, but uh, you know, we had this amount of money. We had a little bit less science than that, and our reputation, we had about 10% less than that. I, I got the numbers wrong. So we are gonna fix that in the beginning. But this is our new agency, um, just KXP2. We're gonna go here first and reduce our science. We had about 336, but that's about as best we can do. That's fine, we'll take the loss on that. And then 29% was where our reputation was. So we're about back to normal. I upgraded the buildings that we needed to. Uh, we don't have any of our contracts, basically. All we did was the first launch, so then uh, everything needs to be redone again. And what I mean by that is we have absolutely no crafts in orbit. So currently we have no communications, and we're going to need to create some sort of network and we're going to need to set one up if we ever want to send a probe to Jewel. And that is the other part to this uh, having to restart is using our planet uh, research bodies mod where we don't know of planets. We had to kind of force our way to unlock these. We had Jewel, which is where we had before, which we wanted. Uh, unfortunately, uh, instead of pole, we now have lathe, and we also have moho in there because I forgot to upgrade my observatory before starting the research. So unfortunately, we have an extra planet unlocked, but we're not going to research it until we get through the Julian ones. Here we have our programs. Unfortunately, we had massive scale launches too on the previous save, but unfortunately we were not able to pick it up because I did not have the reputation requirements for it. I realized I probably could have just forced myself to have the reputation for it and then taken it, but by this point I was just wanting to get started, so we'll start off with massive launches one and then work our way up to two. We also filled in the tech tray with all the tech nodes that we had unlocked. This was an important one because I really, really, really didn't want to have to spend all that time unlocking stuff. Here I'm also showing you that we fully upgraded the buildings that we had fully upgraded and the ones where we didn't, we left at the levels that we had them. So. Uh, just really just trying to get back there. I had forgotten in my prep, I had forgotten to upgrade the runway to where it was supposed to be. So I just decided to do it now. And uh, even though it puts our money at a different spot than what it was before, you know, I decided to just eat that cost and we'll just get started on today's mission, which is first gonna take us into mission control. We grabbed a tourism contract. We just need to take Tito Kerman into low Kerman orbit and return him safely back to the surface. So what I'm showing you now is the ComNet V1 Spider, which was my first attempt at the satellite we are going to use in today's episode. However, this is not the satellite. Those communication dishes, however, will be the ones to use as they have a 200 gigameter range. So as I use Ampere, the handy little mod that tells you whether or not you have enough battery for it. I miscalculate the red number for the number above it, and so technically we do actually have enough battery to to make this last. However, I believe that we don't, so I'm going to go ahead and start a new craft entirely. It's okay though, I was using all kind of Mach 1 parts for a very advanced satellite that I want to make, because I want to make this be able to cover all the way uh, to the outer planets like Jewel and stuff. I want this satellite network to last for quite a while before needing to be upgraded again. 
And so we're going to use the much larger batteries and the much larger probe core, uh, the much larger solar panels to kind of match our much larger communication dishes. So we got a bunch of batteries in here, about 20, I believe, maybe less 15, I think. Um, and we're going to stick some RCS on it because in order to get the orbit that we want to get, we need to be very precise, and that is where some RCS will help us out. We, of course, put a reaction wheel because I don't like relying on RCS to turn my craft. But I'm trying to find the nice balance so our center of mass is still directly in the, the center of the probe. So I did some adjusting there. Now it's time to put the RCS on the top and we're just going to align it into the center there we go and we'll do the same for the bottom and these are going to be the only rcs thrusters they can handle all six directions so uh, that's all we need we don't need to double them up on the sides now comes time to pick the right engine on the mach 1 version i use the spiders uh, however on this one, we are going to use the, uh, I forget what it's called, but kind of like the bigger version of the spider. It's uh, called the Twitch, Twitch uh, propulsion engine. So now because it's a bigger craft, I'm going to actually need to stick more fuel on it if I want to achieve the same Delta V that I had in the Mach 1. And I do want to achieve that same Delta V because it was quite useful. We are going to, however, put on six uh, communication dishes because uh, this is remote tech after all. It's not, it's not enough to just have a dish on there. We have to have it pointed at specific locations, specific other crafts or planets. Uh, and therefore, we're going to need multiple dishes in order to uh, cover all the different spots. I'm throwing some batteries on here. Uh, because at first, I, again, I misread the red number as not having enough. But the number above that is what we need to look at, is how much uh, battery you have to last the dark side in orbit. The red number at the bottom is how much battery you will need to last the dark side while landed, which is a much longer time, therefore needing much longer batteries. However, this is a communication probe, so we are never going to deal with landed therefore it is the top number on that i highly recommend ampere uh it it's not uh updated to the most recent version so it will ccan will be uh warning you about that but uh i haven't found any problems with it it's it's simply a calculator so i don't think it's going to be subject to much change there we are we filled up our lower side with uh, some fuel. We're throwing a communi Communitron 16 on there just uh, for local power or local communication. I liked how the solar panel fit very neatly in the decoupler that we had there, but that will actually be a problem later. And we are going to bring a Kerbal aboard. Not just one Kerbal, but three. Uh, a pilot, an engineer, and a tourist. Our first Kerbal in space on this, uh, on this new new venture, new uh, space agency, and uh, tourism is already a part of it, so I think tourism will probably be a, a large portion of what we do going forward. That's because since we started anew, basically, the game wants us to make certain milestones that I just don't feel like achieving right now. You know, it wants us to uh, fly by the mun. It wants us to land a probe on the moon. It wants us to start checking out Minmus, and and we've already done that in this in this series. And I'm just ready to start moving on. And so that means that the game is going to be giving us different goals to do than what we want to do. And so if we want to just do what we want to do, we're going to need to be able to afford it. Uh, we're going to need to be able to afford our launches and all that stuff because I'm not going to be cheating in any more money. What I created was just to kind of replicate where we were at. And so uh, taking, taking care of our finances is a big portion of the game going forward. 
So now we are just creating our launch vehicle, this fun little uh, shape that I had. I decided because the tank was bigger than our engines, I just didn't like the look of it. So I decided to taper it down at the bottom. And uh, overall, this will be our lifting vehicle. We're going to make one last change at the end and add some SRBs for a little bit better thrust on takeoff. But so now this is a redesign of the ComsNet V1 Spider, so we name it the V2 Black Widow. It was very nice. The reason why they had the spider names was because the communication dishes uh, were web-like. All right, so we have enough Delta V. Like I said, uh, we are going to throw on some side boosters, solid rocket engines. We don't throw any parachutes on it, and we're not planning on recovering any of these stages. But we are planning on using this rocket multiple times. We're going to set up four satellites in today's episode. I didn't even get the chance to talk about what the mission is going to be. But as you can probably tell from the title, we are going to be creating a communications network in geostationary orbit. What that means is that our craft orbits at the same relative speed that the planet does. Essentially, we will be able to have a satellite that stays over one point on the planet uh, and essentially seems to never move because it is orbiting at the exact orbital period that our planet does. This is a uh, geostationary is a play on geostationary orbit and this is a real real type of uh, orbital mechanics. You can have there are certain places on Earth where you can look at a satellite all day long and it will seem like it never moves. First thing we wanna do though is just achieve a regular orbit. We've done this several times before. That's why I just decided to kind of skip ahead through it. But we are going to, at least in the beginning, we're going to focus uh, a lot of attention on the steps to this mission because We've only done one geostationary orbit uh, in our in our entire uh, YouTube series, uh, and that was on KSP2. But uh, we only did the one satellite just to kind of show that we could. Today we are going to be creating our communications network in geostationary orbit. So it's going to be a little bit more complicated than the actual the the average one because we have to make sure uh, that we position our satellites in the appropriate way to keep them all on the same orbital period and all connected with each other so we're just getting ready to do our circularization burn and then after that we are going to focus on the map mode and plot in our next maneuver. So there we go, we're just orbiting at around 100 uh, kilometers. It doesn't really matter where you're at. Um, all that matters is that you are in a proper orbit and will not uh, descend back through the atmosphere. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna plot our first satellite to be in direct sunlight. So that way we have no fears of running out of power. I put on the screen some of the specifics of what we're aiming for. 2,863, 316 meters for our altitude and uh, five hours, 59 minutes, 9.4 seconds for our orbital period. In the orbital period, what that means is it takes that amount of time to make one full revolution at whatever altitude it's at. So now uh, we're going to be able to use much of our lifting engine for this extension burn, which is nice. Uh, it will be space trash. We'll have to clean that up later. but. Uh, it's nice to not have to worry about using too much of our orbital engine because in case something goes wrong, we want to be able to make sure our crew has plenty of fuel in order to return home. There's a little too much gimbal on this engine. Uh, I had already turned down the gimbal well enough, but uh, at this point I didn't like how it was shaking, so I just decided to turn it off. 
But if you ever find your craft um, kind of wobbling mid-flight uh, as you're accelerating, uh, try turning down the gimbal if you can. Okay, so now that we are at our desired apoapsis, we want to just kind of fine tune it. Uh, so we turn down our thrust on our engine and just kind of push it forward until we get that 300 mark on the, the meters. And then the rest of it, we can fine tune with RCS. So now our first step is to line ourselves up with the KSC as much as possible. That's why I wanted to do a geostationary orbit is I'd love to have a satellite that is always in communication with mission control. But what that requires is for me to time it up just right so that way our satellite is above. See, if I were to have taken that first pass at the apoapsis, by the time we had circularized our orbit, we would have been out of communication. We look up here, we see that we have successfully completed some contracts. Tito Kerman, all he needs to do is be returned back to the surface. So this is, it's not great, it's not perfect if uh, Kerbin, the KSC was a little bit in the past, it would have been better, but this is about where we want to line up ourselves up with this. Like I mentioned earlier in the build, the solar panel will become a problem in the decoupler like that and will be throughout the rest of the episode because it takes me a while to get fed up and fix it. So now that I feel like we'll be lined up at the appropriate time, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and plot my maneuver in. I also left the satellite attached to the command pod for as long as I felt comfortable with because in case we ran out of control, uh, we lost signal for some reason or another, the Kerbals themselves could pilot the craft. But there was no need to. We have constant signal with the KSC because it's directly below us and our communication dish is strong enough. So all we have to do is let Flight Computer handle our burn and this will circularize us at the close to the appropriate altitude and then we're going to use RCS to bring us all the way home. And not great, but not bad. So all we need to do is do some adjustments. And when dealing with a geostationary orbit, it's uh, it's wise to do those adjustments because if you don't have the right orbital period, then uh, you will eventually fall out of that orbit. But as we see here, uh, it's not directly below the KSC, but it is uh, it is within communication well enough that I feel very comfortable in this position for the satellite. And so our apoapsis is now at 2,863,385. It's not 386 or 316 but 385 will do for now. We are going to end up adjusting all of our satellites by the end of it anyway, so everything will work out. But there we go, we've got our first geostationary orbit. Let's go ahead and switch back to our crewed vessel and work on bringing it home. So the reason why I wanted to make sure that we didn't use our orbital engine as much as possible is because I would like to just brute force our apoapsis down to a calm orbit above the atmosphere somewhere in the 70 kilometer range because I'd like to have a nice smooth low uh, re-entry angle. I don't like coming in hard and fast especially not with the tourist. Jebediah loves it Bill can, can tolerate Jebediah's uh, love for it, but Tito Kerman has no need to fear for his life. So the goal for today's uh, launches is to land 
to bring our Kerbals back as close to the KSC as we can. We're using the Trajectories mod to calculate where we will land. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, it's a great mod that will also calculate the atmospheric drag that you will come, you will face. And so this red X is telling us exactly where we will land. And it does account for future rotation as well. So by lining that up as close as possible to the KSC, we can successfully return. That little dot you see on our horizon is uh, Jewel. Uh, we'll spot it a couple times coming in. And with that little camera wobble, we know that we are coming down. We will be on a collision course with the surface. We will not be stuck in space. I did not turn down any of the ablator on the heat shield, so we have a full uh, 200 or whatever it comes with. It might actually be more since this is the bigger one. But we have a full amount of ablator, so I'm not too worried. What I am worried about is whether or not the parachute will be able to slow down our craft enough or if it will be able to deploy well enough because I did not put a decoupler on that top part. So that little hat that we have, or that rather large hat, uh, is coming down with us. And just like that, our heating dissipates, our kerbals are fine, and we were fallen very quickly towards the KSC. But not, that is because trajectories worked, uh, the, the prediction that it made was when we had our rocket engine and fuel tank attached below us. Uh, because we jettisoned it, we uh, weighed much less when we came through the atmosphere, which means uh, it took us less time to come through, putting our uh, final trajectory in the coast on the other side of the country. But nonetheless, we had a safe touchdown. Tito Kerman is gonna tell all his friends about how great it was in space, and uh, soon we will be taking more of them as well. As we see here, we can go ahead and bring another one. Easy money. So we're just gonna basically replicate the same launch using the same launch vehicle, same uh, pilot and engineer, Jebediah and Bill. This time with a, a, a new tourist. I forget their name, but it's okay. We only meet these uh, Kerbals once, I believe. But once again, it's a fairly standard launch, and so we're just gonna kinda skip ahead as we get to our point. So we've already made orbit, now we're just going to be adjusting our altitude. The second satellite is not gonna be as easy as the first. On the first one, I was able to pick wherever I wanted and just kinda let it go. Now I have to make sure that I set it up in an appropriate way that I can control it much easier when it comes time to placing the satellite's final position. We need to create uh, a box, a square, a diamond, whatever kind of shape you want, but we need our satellites spaced out evenly uh, equal distance from each other, covering all sides of Kerbin's planet. Kerbin's surface, excuse me. As we see here, we are uh, at the three o'clock and the six o'clock position, if we think of it like a clock. And at the apoapsis, we let Flight Computer handle our burn to circularize our orbit. So, 2,865,000 is uh, much closer, so we're going to have a much easier time setting up. We are not exactly uh, 45 degrees of each other, but It'll work enough, and when, like I mentioned before, the most important part is the orbital period. 
However, with remote tech, the most important part is making sure your communication dishes are pointed the right way. Here, I did not understand that, uh, and I was having problems. I was not connecting to the first satellite. So I took some time, I did some research, logged off, logged back in when I learned, and then I realized that I just needed to adjust it. So here I am renaming uh, my craft so I can easily connect to it again. And then we're gonna switch over and we are going to adjust our communication dishes so that way the commsnet BW curb one, that stands for Black Widow, carbon one, um, make that point at comms BW curb two. And at curb two, we need to have one communication dish at curb one. Actually, I am going to test that out. I don't think we do. I think, and this will actually be very useful if it, if it does work this way. I think I can just have curb one pointed at curb two. And instead of having a dish pointed back at curb one, I can just use that relay and point at curb three and have three point at curb four and then four point at curb one. And then that will connect. Uh, I run into the problem. I have my communication dishes pointed the right way now, but my solar panels are not. Unfortunately, the dishes block enough of the panel. I thought that little edge would be enough to get something, but it's considered block. So it will not receive any power in the position that it's in. Luckily we have Kerbals, but because the craft has no electricity, we can't move the, uh, we can't rotate the direction. So Jebediah very bravely dons his EVA suit and heads out to do the most difficult EVA mission that we have done so far. The dangerous maneuver is definitely a risk taker. Jebediah was the right Kerbal to choose for the job, but it still doesn't negate the fact that he is uh, about to take a very, very large chance. But it's got to be done. That's right, he took all of his force and slammed face first into the side of the rocket, potentially breaking his helmet and uh, spinning off hurtling into the void, but he managed to regain control and uh, safely grabs back onto the ladder and boards the craft. And so even though it was very dangerous, uh, he managed to pull it off in style. And successfully, our craft is now turning. The solar panel on the top is now starting to catch the light and our batteries are starting to charge again which means that we can now use our RCS to point ourselves the rest of the way. So if you have a dead craft, uh, if you have no electricity on it, but uh, you have the ability to, if you can just get your solar panels turned the right way, think of Jebediah Kerman and his face smacking of his craft. Uh, that, that solar panel is just very annoying. Only about seven more times, and I'll start, I'll start getting fed up with it, I'll tell you. But there we go. Fully extended, fully activated. We've got full communication control. Our probe control is advanced, that we have all directions available to us. So we point ourselves radial out, so that way we can make sure to take advantage of our solar panels. So now it's time to come back to the Kerbal Crew and bring them home. And just like before, we are going to do our best to aim for the KSC, make it a short little trip from the rocket back to their vehicles so they can go home and tell their friends and family all about space and how affordable it is because we need that that sweet, sweet tourism money. So we go ahead and this time we try to adjust our aim to be a little bit farther than KSC before we separate. So that way when we land, uh, it'll take into account the change of 
tonnage. However, we were still a little f too far to the left, so we will be landing in the water. But at least this time we have actually landed within view of the KSC, as opposed to in the middle of the ocean, a quarter of the way across the planet. And our parachutes activate with plenty of room to spare, and there's no doubt in my mind that it will be able to safely bring us to shore. But there we go. Another satellite in the sky, another tourist on the ground. So now I decide to just give myself a little extra room on the decoupler, so hopefully our solar panel doesn't catch. And we don't have any tourists to take up this time. Uh, unfortunately, the contract just did not appear in our role. So instead, we take Valentina Kerman and let her uh, experience space as well. We're gonna need we're gonna need her pilot's expertise soon enough. And since all of our pilots uh, seem to have forgotten all the stars they accrued, uh, we should make some use of it so that way we can have our intrepid pilots once more. So once again, just kind of blowing through the first part, the or the launch, the orbit, all of the stuff we've seen before. As long as we know that our craft can handle it and if there's nothing interesting that happens during the time then we'll go ahead and skip it. So now it is going to be a little more complicated than before because now we have two different satellites that we have to pay attention to their positioning. And I want this satellite to be uh, to the left of Curb 2, the one that we just put up, because I don't want to leave my last satellite to be the farthest from all the communication. I want it to still be able to connect with Curb 1. So I have a pretty good spot, I think. So we're getting ready to separate. So we're going to go ahead and name it. Make sure that we have our connections. And I feel that by the time we reach our apoapsis, we'll be in the right spot. So we're going to go ahead and get ready to make our connection. I forgot to mention the circularization burn only takes 429.7 meters per second. So very, very easy for a craft like this to handle. We could have used our lower stage and still been fine. We could have used all of our upper stage and had no problem as well. So this craft is a little uh, over-designed, but nonetheless, it's... Uh, it's an advanced craft, so it's better it's better to have more than it needs. We go ahead and get our solar panel out and circularize our orbit. And look at that, we've got like a little square going, or a diamond, whichever way you want to look at it. And once again, time to bring our Kerbals home. We're going to have a little more fun. This time around, now that Valentina is in the cockpit, we don't have any tourists to worry about. Uh, we are going to keep our engine and fuel tank on the whole way down and see if we can't really fine tune our landing. By this time, we're building a lot of experience and getting, getting really used to how uh, best to use that trajectories mod. Soon we're gonna want to be able to use it with space planes and uh, We're gonna want to be able to land back on the curb and runway if we can so this is this is really good practice Very cloudy day at the KSC It'll be a little bit before we can see our landing zone But trajectory says that we're on due course. In hindsight, I probably should have just left it where it was at. Um, I think we would have landed pretty much exactly where we would have wanted to, but I decided to try to adjust it Forgetting that our parachutes are going to slow us down a lot. 
would like to do is head more to the right. I was kind of wanting to land right in the middle of the KSC. Right at the flagpole. Unfortunately, we flipped around backwards. And because we decided to pop our parachutes uh, when we did, we slowed down t enough that we are no longer going to be landing in the KSC. And uh, that just wasn't good enough for Valentina and Jeb. So we're going to just do a little uh, maneuvering if we can. And honestly, if we just included a reaction wheel, this would probably have been a lot easier. As it stands now, all we're doing is relying on the gimbling of our engine. And with that sound, our parachutes deploy fully. And now it's going to be even harder to adjust. So I decided to take what I can. I landed, I got my trajectory on the sidewalk outside the admin building. I go ahead and give the white shirts a little scare. Let them come outside their building see what the commotion was. And then that way they can properly walk us home. Love a solid landing. There we go. Three down, one to go. So let's go ahead and take one more tourist. Make our uh, make our money's worth out of each launch. And once again, calm, solid, 2.0 thrust to weight ratio with those side boosters means that we have no problem reaching our altitude we have no problem reaching orbit. I decided to adjust the communications uh, dish during this time because what else was I doing? I didn't need to wait until I was already at my maneuver, already in orbit. Ideally, I should have changed it in the VAB, but that is not how we handled today's mission. Alright, so once again, we need to time our way until we fit in the exact spot that we want, which is that third, that final corner of the square. However, the final corner is much, much more difficult. Unfortunately, after many, 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 many passes, I decided that this uh, maneuver here is probably going to be my best bet. It will kind of create a little bit more of a rectangle, a little polygon, weird shape. But uh, all four satellites will be in communication with each other, and we should have a full coverage of our planet. So a little bit off is fine. And uh, for the last time, I will say, as long as the orbital period is fine, that's all that matters, because then they will not shift out of position with each other, and, uh, and it'll be a solid network. So once last time, burning our uh, circularization burn, we will adjust it using RCS. And uh, we need some electric charge before we can actually utilize it. And there we go. So now we have a fully functional, fully set up communications network. And in the next episode, we can actually start using probes and uh, doing other stuff. However, in the next episode, we are actually going to focus on some more tourist contracts. I'm very excited to show you what I've done. I already got that footage recovered 
recovered, recorded, excuse me. So now we are taking our final set of Kerbals home, Jebediah, Bill, and a tourist. Once again, we are leaving on our fuel tank and engine, letting them act as our heat shield. And today, not only is it cloudy at the KSC, but it is directly between two storms. A little dark spot is the mountains. I love the fact that they stick out higher than the clouds. Very nice touch. Here we come on the final descent. Final approach. Once again, our trajectory point is slightly off center to where we want it to be. And this is where I was starting to say, I started to realize that if I had just put a reaction wheel on there, everything would have been fine. I could have controlled this much more easily, even in the atmosphere. But you live and you learn or you live at any rate. So learning a little bit about throttle control from the last few launches. We'll go ahead and get ourselves turned. However, we uh, turned very much the wrong way and now we are ballistically uh, <laughs> inclined to come back to the KSC. I accidentally pressed the wrong button, go into first person view, start to freak out, so I decided to just stage it. And as much as we would have loved to land our final our final landing at the KSC flagpole, we're just gonna take what we can get. But we're still within view of the KSC. We didn't bomb any of our facilities, so that's always a plus. And once again, our parachutes open, leaving us no choice but to land safely. Which is another tourist down, and uh, in the next episode, we are really going to uh, pile on the contracts to make the most of our journeys. But that brings to a close the missions. Um, I'm very excited to keep going with this. I have some some big plans in the next coming episodes, the next soon ones. Um, with uh, the start over, it really made me really kind of focus on the more important things. And in this series, exploration is the most important thing. Uh, so we are going to forgo our Minmus base and uh, instead focus our eyes outward. We may uh, try looking at some asteroids at some point, putting up a telescope for that. And uh, we're going to keep doing the research bodies as well. But anyways, that is where I'm going to leave today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're looking forward for more KXP. If you did, please consider giving me a like, drop me a comment, let me know your thoughts, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.